theatre, glamour, innovation, heritage. If you try and think of a place in the world that embodies all these qualities, then it's unlikely that Woking is going to be at the top of your list. But nestling in this corner of leafy Surrey is this place, the McLaren Technology Centre. Much of the theatre comes from the building itself, which is just breathtaking. The glamour and the innovation come mainly from what McLaren is most famous for, and that is obviously the Formula One race team. This is where all the hard work happens. It's where all the research and development goes on, and it's where the engineers work around the clock to come up with upgrades for the next race. Now, unfortunately, we can't show you any of that because those areas of the building are strictly off limits to our cameras, just in case we inadvertently give away some of McLaren's secrets, which is a real shame because it's literally 50 yards over there. But although we're confined to this central atrium, you still get a real flavour of the rich racing heritage that lives and breathes in this place. And this here is an excellent example. This is the sister car of the one that team founder Bruce McLaren drove at the 1968 Belgian Grand Prix at Spa. And that was the team's first ever race victory. And as we know, it was the first of many. Back then, this car was known as the M7A, but following developments made for subsequent races and seasons, the car you see before you now is actually called the M7C. But although it's evolved, it's actually still the same basic car. This theme of evolution brings us onto the real reason we're here. You see, in the past, McLaren has merely dabbled in road cars with the likes of the McLaren F1 and the SLR. But these days, the firm's evolved into a proper bona fide car manufacturer. The factory is in another very large building just over there. Road car production only started here in 2011 with the 12C, but now even that's evolved. Since then, McLaren's engineers have developed the P1 hypercar and they've learned a few new tricks along the way. Those tricks have now filtered down the range and the result is the new 650S. To see whether this supercar evolution has brought about a supercar revolution, we're taking the 650S back to the place where the good times really started to roll for McLaren, and that is the Spa circuit in Belgium. This is going to be a good day. was and is an amazing car, but take it from us, the 650S is even better. But the question is, apart from that new nose, what's changed? Well, in true McLaren fashion, they've thrown a whole bunch of technology at it. I could prattle on all day taking you through the intricacies, but let me just give you the highlights. First off, the engine, which is a 3.8 litre twin turbocharged V8, has been given more power and torque and the seven-speed twin-clutch transmission is now even more sophisticated. Aerodynamics have improved all round, including an active rear wing that moves around intelligently to maximise downforce in any given situation. The insanely clever suspension now has dampers derived from those on the P1. Carbon ceramic brakes are now standard fit, and even the tyres are designed and manufactured specifically for the 650S. Now all that's important, but the really important bit is how it all makes the car feel. And the answer is absolutely stunning. It's the sheer duality of this thing that really gets you. I mean, I've been driving it for what, five hours now in order to get down here. And I feel just as fresh as when I left. It's just so quiet and comfortable and civilized that long journeys just aren't a chore like they are in most supercars. But when you want it to be a proper supercar, then 
Lordy Lord, it is electrifying. The engine's now got 641 brake horsepower and with the throttle hard down, you're doing scary speeds pretty much instantly. Man alive, this car is insanely fast. And as you can tell, it sounds like a proper nut job as well. But what's even more impressive than the pace is the handling. Like all McLaren road cars, the 650S is built on a carbon fibre chassis that's both immensely rigid and immensely light. And you can really feel that in the way the car changes direction. The grip is just incredible. The weight distribution is perfect. And that suspension that was keeping me so comfortable earlier on is now suppressing body lean to a point where it's pretty much non-existent. And the controls feel alive with sensation. The steering, for instance, gives you loads of feedback and it's really responsive and really, really precise. I've been lucky enough to drive quite a few very fast, very expensive cars in my time, but I can't think of a single one of them that has impressed me more than the 650S. It is simply astonishing. <laughs> So Spa is where Big Bruce took the team's first race win, but that's not the only reason we've come here. You see, McLaren's race exploits extend much further than just Formula One, and we've come to see the 24 hours of Spa, an endurance race in which a number of 12C GT3 cars are competing. Now, I can honestly say that of all the racetracks I've seen on the TV, Spa has always been my favorite and it's been a bit of a lifelong ambition to drive just one lap of the place. But let's face it, that's not gonna happen, especially with a race weekend going on. However, we can do the next best thing. Back in the day, Spa was arguably the most dangerous racetrack on any calendar, partly because the weather could change like that, but primarily because it was so stupidly fast. Fatalities were scarily commonplace, so in 1978, a large part of the track was shut down to make Spa the shorter circuit it is now. And these old sections of track are still accessible as public highways. And this is probably the most notorious part of the old track, and it's called the Master Kink. It's a left-right chicane sandwiched between two massively fast straights. And it doesn't look like much now, but you can imagine at 160, 170 miles an hour, it would have been pretty hairy. So basically, we've just driven on a piece of racing history, and that is really, really cool. But it's now time to go and see how the pros do it. Here we are at the famous Spa circuit, and as you can see, we don't have to leave our 650S in some isolated car park miles away from anywhere. We get to park our car in the paddock right next to the track. Feeling quite important now. The 24 Hours of Spa is the headline event of the Blancpain Endurance Racing Series. 40 odd teams are competing in this gruelling round the clock race and four of them are running McLarens. These 12C GT3s are designed, developed and built by McLaren GT, the company's customer racing wing. But they're not run by McLaren GT. The whole customer racing thing means that the teams and the cars are privately owned. So, McLaren GT will sell you the car and provide as much technical support as you're prepared to pay for. But after that, the running of the team, it's up to you. So in 
exactly how much does an operation like all this cost? Well, no one's saying exactly, but I shudder to think. Even so, it's really, really cool that if you've got enough money and the appropriate level of race license, you can get involved in all this. And here's the car you get in all its orange glory. But if you're absolutely minted and you fancy getting involved next season, then you could have yourself one of these. The new 650S GT3 car was unveiled a couple of months ago at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and it will be ready to race from January. So it's coming up to four o'clock. We're just getting ready for the kickoff. Good luck to all the McLaren runners. We'll be watching your progress with interest. So the support races are still going on, but our race is all over. And it was a pretty eventful one. Of a field of around 60 cars, around a third failed to make the finish. And sadly, all but one of the McLarens went the same way. But while it's been a disappointing weekend for our host, it has been an awesome weekend for us. We've experienced some great racing, some colorful characters, and a truly magical race circuit. But the best bit, by far, has been the car we came down in, the 650S. What an incredible machine this car is. And that's why I'm not really sorry that this weekend's over, because now I get to drive home.